What crazy ass story do you need to tell? When my mom was pregnant with me, she and my father divorced, and he gave up all parental rights. I've never met him, or spoken to him, I've only seen a few pictures. About 2 years ago, I worked at a healthcare facility, where I would float to different offices around the county, based on who needed the help. This one particular morning I was checking the doctor's schedule, and saw my father's name. He was scheduled to be in the office next door to where I was working, and I thought it was pretty crazy, but I most likely wouldn't even see him. The time of his appointment came, and he walked into my office straight up to me, and says he had a doctor's appointment with Dr. X. My heart was racing cause I knew it was him, as soon as he walked through the door. I told him Dr. X was the office next door and he left. A little while later I walked over to the other office to deliver some faxes, and on my way out he trailed behind me, and I held the door for him. He said thank you, and that was my one and only interaction with my father in my 30 years of living. Edit, you all have really made my day with all this karma and silver. Thanks kind redditors. 3 to 4 years ago. I was living in this bigger European city 2 mil people for some years now. I went with a girl to a pub, and since all tables were full, we sat at the bar. There was an older guy sitting next to me 50 ish white hair, smoking a cigar who kind distracted me, because he reminded me of my uncle. Now mind, my uncle was living in the US for around 25 years already, he didn't look like that dude, nor did he act too similar. That bar guy just had some gestures, that reminded me of him, mixed with the look of another distant relative. So. The girl I was with goes to the toilet, so I can't hold back anymore and look this dude in the eyes, and tell him he reminds me of my uncle. He jokingly asks, what's his name? I tell him, and also tell him wheel. He lives in the US and works in field off work. And then the guy looks stunned, and tells me the names of my whole ducking family. Turns out he was the flatbutt of my uncle 30 years ago for about half a year. That was definitely one of the weirdest bar stories I experienced, TL and ER. Went to bar in big city, guy reminds me of my uncle. I tell him. Turns out he was my uncle's flatmate 30 years ago for half a year. Uncle lives on another continent for 25 years now. So me and my brother are fraternal twins. My stepmom passed away due to breast cancer when we were around 15 years old. She was like a second mother to us and had been around since we were very young 5 years old. Now fast forward to our junior year of college. I attended a school in upstate New York, while he attended a university in the state of Florida. One night I woke up in sweat with tears coming down my eyes. I had the most vivid dream. I was in a house and my stepmother was there. I knew she had passed in this dream, which was a first for me. She hugged me, told me how handsome I had become, and that she loved me. I woke up drenched in sweat thinking WTF was that. I didn't say anything to anybody, and went to class. As I'm walking back to my apartment after class, I get a call from my brother. His first words were I know this is going to sound weird, but I had the most vivid dream about Maggie last night. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up as he went on to describe the same dream I had just experienced the night prior. We've never had a twin moment like this, and I don't really know what to make of it, but it's always been a story that I wanted to tell. Was served lunch sometime during a flight. While eating, noticed that the woman next to me is slowing down in her movements, slower cutting, slower chewing, etc. Suddenly she stops completely in her movements, fork and knife in hands, half cut food on her plate, face bowed forward above her plate and nothing else touched her on the shoulder, pushed a little bit, asked her if everything was okay, no reaction. Couldn't really tell if she was still alive. Was it the air conditioning or her breath? No idea, didn't want to panic and frighten everyone else. You know, dead person. Made eye contact with a stewardess, point towards next to me. Couple minutes later, five stewardesses including co-pilot form a barrier around our seats, and like in a movie tried to get a reaction knackered on to die on me. Woman wakes up, looks up and says just this one sentence, I took really strong sleeping pills, and goes back to sleep in the same tyrannosaurus posture. 
as if this has happened before, and she had anticipated this conversation, as if she knew that her mind would be only be awakened long enough for one sentence, so for the entire remaining 6 to 7 hour flight, there is this lady next to me, mimicking a tyrannosaurus, her hand still grabbing the now removed fork and knife, drooling on the table, and everyone passing by giving me this questioning look. Best flight ever. This is one long ass story, but the coincidence is astounding. I'm from a tiny province in the Philippines who decided to work in Manila right after college way back 2007. I got into a call center, and met a lot of friends. Stayed in the company for about 2 years, graveyard shift wasn't for me. Fast forward to 2013. My widowed mom in the province, met through a mutual friend a French guy and they both got interested with each other. They eventually got engaged in 2014, and married soon after 9TDF France, so they could move back to France. As they were planning their trip, I posted on social media about possible Filipino connections in France, to help my mom transition well. A former colleague of mine in that call center in Manila many years back sent me a message told me that she has this Filipina friend let's call her Awina who has been living in France for 20 plus years now, and that she may be able to help my mom. So, I told my mom, to add Rowena on Facebook, and connect with her. They didn't they got into talking. One day my mom was Skyping with her, they were talking about their husbands, when my mom pulled out, and showed to her a vintage photo of her husband, when he was in university. An old photo of him sitting on a couch with his then best friend whom he has not seen since graduating. Career opportunities abroad, and no cell phones during that time, led to them growing apart. As soon as Rowena saw the photo, she gasped. That's my husband beside your husband, she said. She then hurriedly went to her office, and took out the exact same photo which her husband has kept through the years as well. After a few shocks and tears, two long lost best friends were able to catch up after nearly 40 years. TL, drug by amazing coincidence, two best friends found each other through their wives. For context, him a 19 year old Scottish guy who was interrailing around Europe for a month. We were in Budapest for a few days hitting up the clubs and spartas, really enjoying ourselves. Eventually it comes time to leave, and we decide to get an early morning train to split around 5am. Anyways, we have two taxis booked to the train station and we stumble out still kind of half asleep, and start loading our stuff into the taxis. As we're loading we see three young guys sprinting full speed ahead up the road shouting ducking run. We laughed, thought they were just having drunk fun. No, no they were not. As we get in the taxis this guy covered head to toe into twos and others blood comes to my door, and asks to shake my hand. Not wanting to offend this crazy looking ducker I shake his bloodied hand, and he wishes me well. Phew, got off lightly. Guy tries to do the same with our big duck off Bulgarian taxi driver. He refuses. Bulgarian taxi driver gets in taxi and starts to back out. Crazy Duck is not happy with this, and starts to go to town on this guy's taxi with elbows, fists, knees etc. We start to drive away thinking there's no chance he's gonna be bothered to follow a taxi going 20 miles per hour. Right? Now this duck is duck and superman. Sprints faster than humanely possible after a taxi with this mad look in his eye. Taxi driver goes to turn a corner, thinking we'd got away from him, but as we turn there's a bin lorry blocking the entire road. Crazy duck rounds this corner like an atom out the duck in Hadron Collider. At this point I'm shouting half asleep Scottish as our taxi driver lock a few kin doors which he thankfully does. Crazy duck starts battering the windows in with fists, blood smeared everywhere, knuckles burst, rips off the wing mirrors, starts smashing the windows in with them. At this point our friends in the taxi behind us are buckled in laughter as we sit in pure terror as the duck in Grim Reaper looms ready to take our souls. Both taxi drivers get out, to get him to duck off, spits in both their faces and throws the wing mirror at them then books it out of there. Maddest thing about it is as he was leaving he very nicely apologizes to one of the locals watching this in awe. TLDR. Don't refuse handshakes from men covered in blood, it's rude. This is a long story from the early 1980s that has Kentucky justice in it. My family lived just outside of Cincinnati on the Kentucky side of the Ohio River. My father's older brother lived here as well, and was a father to four daughters. 
One of his daughters at the age of 18 or so was dating a guy who was a little older than her, who convinced her to move down south with him. My uncle approved, and his daughter headed south with her boyfriend into a Kentucky holler that his extended family lived in. Time passed and my uncle hadn't heard from his daughter in a while, and he started to grow concerned. My cousin called my uncle in distress from a payphone at a grocery store, saying she was being mistreated by her boyfriend's family and being held hostage and worked like a slave. Before my uncle could learn more, the phone was cut off. At this point in the story, it's important to know my uncle was an avid hunter and gun collector. He explained to his wife and other daughters the situation. He packed up his Oldsmobile Delta 88 with his favorite guns and headed down to the holler his daughter's boyfriend was from. He was going down in hillbilly country, where there were no street names, just dirt roads and family farms. By the time he finally found their farmhouse it was night. The boyfriend's family was on the porch shooting shotguns off into the air, fully expecting to scare my uncle away. My uncle stopped his car 50 yards from the house and popped the trunk. He methodically lined up his rifles on the hood of the car facing the house, tooling up like Arnold in commando on the beach. My uncle was an extremely large man, who was well known for having an explosive temper. Completely unfazed, he shouted up to the hillbillies, if my daughter doesn't come down in 5 minutes, I'm going to come up there and kill every man, woman, and child I see. The boyfriend and his brothers ran back inside the house, and not even one minute later my cousin came running out of the house with her single suitcase. Same uncle another time, was driving on a bridge that spanned some small river. The bridge was old and only had enough room for one car to traverse at a time. He came to a standoff with three hillbillies in a pickup truck, who were honking and yelling at him to back up. My uncle ever stubborn refused, and instead got out of his car figuring head show them how big he was, and they'd change their tune. One of the hillbillies shouted to my uncle, you don't scare us, there are three of us. And my uncle like a psychopath shouted back, do all three of you know how to swim? To which they relented, and backed up their truck, to let my uncle pass. I work in a supermarket as team leader. I'm quite social. So I like to include everyone who's new, and make them feel comfortable. So there was this new guy, around 17 years old who was very quiet. He spoke only when spoken to and no one really tried to converse with him. So I did, I was very kind to him, and at first he wasn't really approachable. But over the weeks he came loose, and was kind to me as well. Yet, no other co-workers did this however. I did not give it a second thought of why not, but I knew why, when he quit after 3 months. Turned out he had to this this as some kind of community service, as a criminal and my cheap ass supermarket hired him, because they only had to pay him one half of the normal salary. But that's not all. A year later or so, some drunk dudes in a bar, started a fight with me, was not big deal until I went home. Five of them waited for me at the exit. I did not want my friend involved, so I just kept on walking away like they weren't there, until they legit stopped me to beat my ass. And there he was, the guy from the supermarket with his gang banging friends. I never felt so cool in my life. Six dudes around 21 to 25 years old came to my rescue, because he was my friend. They treated them, and asked them tell us, why we shouldn't fucking kill you right now cold and thank him and them enough and after that we went separate ways again. Sometimes I still see him, and we give each other a nod. A little while back my roommate was contacted by a wealthy man in the area who wanted to pay her to be his live-in pet for an entire month. She thought that this was a cute as way of saying that it was a sugar daddy slash baby arrangement. Turns out what he actually meant was that she would be given room, board and a very healthy allowance to spend a large portion of her day dressed as a cat, walking on her hands and knees, eating out of a bowl, using a litter box, and, yes, sleeping in a little cage at night. Sex wasn't even on the table. He was only interested in having a human cat for a month. She seriously considered the offer for a weekend, and then politely declined. Edit, this allowance would have covered her college tuition for the semester. He knew what he wanted, and was very motivated.